There is growing outrage inside and outside of Iran. A week ago, crowds were chanting death to America. Now they're yelling down with the liars, down with the murderers. But they are also grieving. 176 people died on that plane. The victims come from seven different countries, including, of course, Canada and Iran. Tehran's confession is already being spun by the U.S. president, and what he's saying could have major implications for the region. All of these developments could also influence the crash investigation. Prime Minister Trudeau is pleading for more information about how such a horrific tragedy could have happened. Many of these families have fled Iran, fled the regime, tried to build a better life for them elsewhere and to have uh, the uh, regime that they have left behind um, accept responsibility for this is a, a bitter pill indeed. 57 Canadians died on Flight 752. In fact, nearly everyone on board was headed to Canada. The victims were doctors, students, a newlywed couple, people with roots right across the country. And the families of the victims, they're desperate for more answers. We have so many questions and there's no answer. All they said was unintentional attack and okay, so what, why? The plane was shot down mere hours after Iran attacked a U.S. base in Iraq and mere days after Trump ordered the killing of Iran's top general. So did all the passengers on that plane pay the ultimate price in a conflict that they had nothing to do with? Donald Trump's initial response? But somebody could have made a mistake on the other side, could have, could have made a mistake. It was flying, it was, it was flying in uh, not our system, no, it has nothing to do with us. So will all of this conflict between the United States and Iran prevent Canada from being able to piece together exactly what happened? Our investigators are only just now on the ground in Tehran. And that's a problem because the Iranians, they've cleared the wreckage away. Scavengers have reportedly been picking through the rest. An Associated Press photo shows a bulldozer clearing the crash site, potentially destroying evidence like chemical residue from an explosive. Even a reporter was allowed to pick her way through the debris field. We've arrived at what the local people say is the crash site. There are no guards here. Nobody uh, tried to stop us coming in. In fact, there are people all over, some looking for things of value to take away, some just uh, reflecting on what's happened. The site was not properly secured until Friday. And this video shot soon after the crash and before Iran admitted it had shot the plane down, following three days of saying it was a mechanical failure and that a missile strike was impossible. Joining me now is Bachman Kalbasi. He is a correspondent for the BBC's Persian service and he's here in Toronto covering this story. So, Bachman, this is quite quite a huge thing. Just last week, those protesters were chanting death to America. Now they seem to be the, on the other side, chanting, you know, that the regime is, is lying to them. What happened? Why this big change? For, th for three days, they denied it. Iran is not a monolith, so diversity of views and 80 million people, but cost-benefit analysis went into this. They were presented by a lot of evidence from Western countries that showed they had the goods on them, that it was very difficult to deny. Investigators coming in would see even more evidence. So they realized lying about it was very hard, especially given the deficit of trust that exists internally. So cover, cover up wasn't gonna be bought by a lot of people in Iran. So they, at the end, decided carrying this on, this facade of no, nothing to see here, was almost impossible. Huh. CBC, of course, we haven't been able to confirm this, but, but you have some evidence. We have, we have sources telling us inside that the goods that Western intelligence had on what really went down here was too overwhelming, that really played into the analysis of the Iranian government. We know the Canadian foreign minister spoke with the Iranian foreign minister, foreign minister on the phone before they announced that they're going to take responsibilities. So now we have President Trump basically supporting the protesters. He's tweeting in Persian saying, we're with you, be, we're with you, be, continue being courageous. How is that going over in Iran? Large segments of the society uh, look at Donald Trump's last three years and they see sanctions that have suffocated the Iranian economy. They see him putting Iranians on travel ban. These are policies that uh, primarily impact ordinary Iranians, not the government. So there's not much of a love lost for this administration by the parts of this 
uh, Iranian society that sees this administration as hostile, even to those who are, who are opposed to the government. Again, diversity in 80 million people, not everybody feels the same. How much does what happened in 1988, this is not the first time that a plane has been taken down in a conflict between Iran and, uh, and the U.S. A U.S. Navy warship shot down an Iranian passenger plane, killing 290 people back in 88. Uh, how does that play into all of this now? And the clip of President Bush father repeatedly saying, I will not apologize no matter where the facts take me. And it took eight years to apologize. Uh, exactly. So they, th that, is, that incident is on top of Iranian grievances against the United States in the last 30, 40 years. But to, for the Iranian government to want to use that to any way justify the horror that went down a few days ago with downing the plane uh, is now going to be, you know, it will be a very hard sell for the public in Iran. There was that tweet just recently tweeted by the foreign minister in Iran basically saying that, yes, there was an error, but he blames the error on a time of crisis caused by U.S. adventurism. So this is basically saying Trump had a big role in our error. How is that going over in Iran? The reality is their spin does sell with part of the population, and that is none of these things, the skirmishes in Persian Gulf or the confrontation in Iraq, would have happened if the U.S. hadn't violated the nuclear deal, hadn't brought these sanctions back. But So it's not even about Soleimani in that It's case. not even about Soleimani. It goes back to the date that Trump violated the deal. But is that going over? It, it won't go over well with the population that sees this error singularly as a massive failure and incompetence on the part of government, which already is seen as massively incompetent. Bachman, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Joining me now from Chicago is Bruce Heyman. He is a former U.S. ambassador to Canada under the Obama administration and author of The Art of Diplomacy. Um, so we just heard the Iranian reaction to that tweet from the Iranian foreign minister uh, blaming the error on U.S. adventurism. How is that going over in the United States, this effort to put some of the blame for what happened on, on President Trump? Uh, first of all, uh, let me extend my condolences to the Canadian people, the families, the friends of those that have been impacted by this. It's such a tragedy, and um, it should never have happened. This is, this is um, about as awful a thing I can think of, and uh, my heart goes out to all of you. Um, I, the Iranians own this responsibility, and in uh, conflict or war around the world, militaries are held to a standard. And that standard in this particular regard, I think was broken. And the Iranians have now admitted that they uh, unintentionally shot this uh, plane down. Um, they own it, it's their responsibility. Uh, but I think as the prime minister has said uh, in uh, Trudeau, um, there are a lot of questions that probably still need to be answered and a lot of uh, work to be done on the consular side dealing with the victims and, and their families. We heard from the Persian BBC correspondent that now uh, that the sources are telling them that the Iranians uh, were made aware by Western, Western sources saying, we have the goods against you. What, what are you hearing? What, what is it that, that caused this huge change from denial to admission? I think all along the Iranians knew what had taken place. The question is, could they hide it or obfuscate it in ways to kick the can down the road to not own the responsibility? Um, unfortunately, both uh, intelligence, which was presented by the prime minister and other uh, government leaders, as well as media and the New York Times and videos that are out there, uh, just made it too difficult to lie through this. and so. As a result of that, the, the Iranians had to admit the, that they had actually done this. Repeatedly, uh, your president, Trump, has, has said that there was an imminent threat that led to the killing of Sol Soleimani. Um, but he keeps being asked about what's the exact proof on that. Here, I want to get your reaction to uh, an interview he gave to Laura Ingram on Fox. And this is what he said. Don't the American people have a right to know what specifically was targeted without revealing methods and sources? Well, I don't think so, but we will tell you that probably it was going to be the embassy in Baghdad. So he went on to say that actually four embassies, that he can reveal that he believes that four embassies, but we've got the senators, even some Republican senators, given a classified briefing saying 
was insulting. They haven't made the case. I mean, what is what is the spin from from both sides on on this? So the the president has you know had a credibility problem since the day he came into office. Um, the Washington Post says he has told more than fifteen thousand lies. In this particular case, now it's it's very serious. We have targeted the general uh, of Iran and assassinated him, and we want to know why. And the administration has changed that story so many times this last week um, that it's losing credibility very rapidly uh, on this response, and he's losing Republican members of the Senate and the House as well as uh, Democrats. Bruce Heyman, thank you so much for speaking to me. Pleasure. Bruce Heyman in Chicago.